you know something outside your reality happens maybe you start crying maybe you start laughing maybe your body starts shaking maybe you start sweating maybe maybe it's gentler maybe it's like your heart just suddenly melts or something happens, or it could even be an external something that happens in one of those pauses that causes this opening. But you needed to create space out of time so that it could happen because it doesn't happen within time. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's sort of the Gene Keys is hard to explain because it's sequential and, ma and, and kind of mathematical, but it's also magical. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of your genetic blueprint? Join us as Richard Rudd, the visionary behind the Gene Keys, embracing your high purpose, guides us through an enlightening exploration of self-discovery and personal growth. Richard shares the transformative power of the Gene Keys system, a unique framework designed to unlock our hidden potential and lead us on a path of personal evolution. With a focus on the practice of pausing, to positive reflection and breakthroughs, and a fresh perspective on finding our true purpose through simply being. This episode promises to challenge your conventional beliefs and inspire a journey of deep self-exploration. We'll also peek into the future of the gene keys within corporate environments, exploring how they can cultivate coherence and harmony in teams and organizations. So prepare to embark on a journey that promises to transform your understanding of yourself and your potential. So good morning, good evening or good afternoon, depending on what side of the globe you are sitting on at this very moment, we have an amazing guest for you. Welcome to the show, Richard Rudd. Hi, Catherine. Lovely to be here. I am so excited that you have come on the show. I cannot tell you how excited I am. So before we get started, the way that we start the show is we always love to ask our guests, what inspired you to do what you do today, Richard? What inspired me to do what I do today? Um, well, I guess like, I guess it, it, if I really go deep, I, the answer is my suffering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the things that I find hard in life um, have been the things like my wounding from childhood um, or, you know, kind of being sent off to an English boarding school, you know, at the age of seven and the sort of trauma of that going through my body and my emotions and and then being kind of numbed by that experience and growing up through an English childhood, you know, where I kind of wasn't really, at some level, I wasn't emotionally alive because of that shock of, to my system. And then I think um, growing up through my teenage years, um, I had a sort of sharp mind and I was a good learner. So I developed my mind, but then my emotions were completely left behind, as many Englishmen from that period are were. <clears throat> and um and at a certain point i went off to kind of find out more about myself and relationships were hard um and but then i i think i started to find teachers and teachings um i was interested in like spirituality and things from an early age and then i started to kind of realize that i was numb here right fairly numb as and i and realized later that actually many of us are um and and um, I, it was a pattern I specially found among men, and um, and I kind of had to find my heart again, and so I went on this long journey through my twenties and thirties, exploring um, around the world. I travelled extensively around the world, um, exploring mystical philosophical subjects. I studied philosophy at university and English, and I'm a writer and a poet and a published poet. And um, so I, that's how I started to access my heart and my soul again um, through writing and then eventually through speaking and sharing and now teaching. And I developed a whole um, personal development system called the Gene Keys. And, out, and that's now 
translated into many languages across the world and has become a business. And so I'm now at the core of a whole sort of movement, um, which has just swept me along. And so I think, but it all started from the part of me that was, you know, asleep. And it slowly in, and, sudden, and, and occasionally with sudden bursts and revelations that have come to me, it's woken up and I've woken up with it. So um, I guess that kind of brings us a little bit up to date. <laughs> and for someone who's not familiar with Jenkins, how would you describe it to them? Um, um, and I think it's, it's, and you can go as deep as you like, because um, I know that when I have uh, spoken about it, there's some people that have heard about it and their understanding is very different to different people. So I'd love for you to explain exactly for the, for the people that don't know what Gene Keys is. Uh, yeah. What is it exactly? Well, as I said, it's a, it's a system of personal development and um, it has lots of layers built into it. It's designed and built around a, a matrix um, which is inspired by the Chinese I Ching, also partly inspired by another system called human design, which some may have heard or not, which is also derived from the Chinese I Ching. And the Chinese I Ching is an ancient book um, that some may have heard of. Um, and it's it's more than a book. It's a code. And it's a code of 64 segments called hexagrams. And I don't, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but they're archetypes. And they were used for thousands of years in China as a way of measuring natural forces and mapping natural forces intuitively. So a lot of the ancient rulers and um, whether they you know, used this method, they used it actually as a divination method as well, but it's, it is a universal code and it also exactly maps our DNA. This is made up of 64 and the way in which these symbols or hexagrams are built out of these structures also maps in detail the mathematics of our DNA with the four bases, the triplets, the 64 codons, even the chromosomes, everything is mapped into this ancient system. And it was discovered way before DNA was. But it's also been shown to be in a lot of natural systems, you know, the same code. So I use this universal code as a way of extrapolating human um, shadow patterns, um, trauma patterns, and how to transform them into gifts. So the very thing that, like I explained earlier, like the thing that was the hardest thing in my life became my gift. Out of that became, became my vocation, came my prosperity, came my marriage, came my family, everything. All good things in my life came out of the wound. <laughs> And that's what the Gene Keys are. It's a, it's a way of working with the challenges, wounds and difficulties in your life and seeing that they contain gifts. And through this code of 64 and mapping it in lots of different ways, like through a big book that I wrote in, you know, 15 years ago called the Gene Keys that's now sort of everywhere. That's the sort of Bible of the Gene Keys, but it's got offshoots as well. I've written other books now that help unpack it because it's very dense um but it's a wonderful contemplative tool that anyone can pick up and use um and that can help you sort of unearth some of these challenges and um, begin to work on them and begin to pull out the treasures that lie inside you and the final thing just to add is that the thing that a lot of people know jinkies for is its profile so we have a profiling system at the heart of it that is that puts those 64 things around a wheel and then uses um, calculation based from an astrological calculation, the time, date, and place of your birth, but it's not astrology. Um, and it finds though which of those keys relates to you in different sequences, which again is sort of, I call it a hologenetic profile because it's a sort, it, it, it behaves like a, a genetic map of, or a, I could say a poetic genetic map because I'm a poet, really. So when when I look at DNA and genetics, it's a poet's view, not a scientist's view. And so out of this has come this very poetic system that people can work with. And you can follow your profile and you can begin to see which keys relate to you and how those shadow patterns can be, you can be um, harmonized in your life. 
and accepted and embraced and released. So it's very kind of universal. It's very gutsy. You know, it's not a kind of quick fix system, like it's straight into the heart of your difficulties in life. That's where we begin. And so you've got to be courageous just to even want to look there. Um, but it's gentle as well, um, because you have to treat those woundings inside yourself gently. Otherwise, you know, you can't soften into them and begin to release them and you can't open your heart again and you can't find this this lucidity in your mind which is connected to the openness of your heart you know and if you find those two things then you know jinkies have done their job because that's what they're here for to open the heart and to create this incredible clarity in our mind so that we can be really clear about the decisions in our life and what belongs where and you know who's saying what and you know Find your way through the minefield that is the modern world. Anyway, so I hope I did all right there. <laughs> you did amazing. And I was just wondering, so so we're born with these uh, 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 gene keys. We're born yeah. with these different codes. And, and then is it up to us to activate them? Or because from my understanding with the shadow, if we don't go into the shadow and uh, bring light to what sits in the shadow, it's not really activating the gift. Um, but I know yeah. you're learning. Like I said, I'm got, I'm actually guiding myself through it. Is is that what we need to do? Is it actually dance with those particular archetypes? Yeah, you see, in a way, like if I kind of um, if I go deeper, like the body, because it's all in the body, right? The body, when you take it really apart through quantum physics, it's made of light. Ultimately, yeah, that's what we are. We we're, we're we're like made of light signatures and frequencies and even even at even at the subatomic level you know we're made of frequencies of of vibrations and so our dna is like a part of that and dna is packed into every cell of our body and it's and it's there's so much of it and it's coding so it's like on a computer there's just all this code and that's what we are we are coding and the thing about our code is that it can it has different levels of frequency that it can activate. So the shadow pattern is a frequency and that is a victim frequency. So if you are living within that frequency field of what we call the shadow, what Jung, Carl Jung called the shadow archetype, then what you'll what you'll see happening in your life is repeating patterns or addictive pro kind of traumas that you keep being stuck in and you keep repeating them and re-imprinting them over and over and over again and you can keep moving on and changing your life as much as you like but the pattern will continue in different ways and that's a genetic pattern that's wired into us through things that happened in our childhood for example and you know you don't even need to know how it happened but you need to come into touch with you know how it is happening now um, and so you, then you begin to see it and work with it with your awareness and that awareness begins to soften and then you can begin to operate differently out of your because you input a different frequency you start living at a different frequency so you ch the same dna pattern you know which you can't change well <laughs> that's debatable but you can't change the essential nature but you can change its operating frequency so you can raise it so it then activates a higher aspect so then that we call that a gift so and that's a creative aspect so the thing that was bothering you undermining you making you unhappy shutting down your hormonal pathways making you ill getting you stuck in all kinds of things and issues that very thing becomes the source of a creative gift or a creative explosion and who knows where that creativity is going to go in you but it starts to come out in your life in a more positive way and then it starts to infect its environment in a good way because it starts to generate um, attention good attention healthy attention um, it starts to draw in allies and that creativity can become many things it, it because it changes the pattern but it's the same you underneath you're just operating at a higher frequency and the highest frequency 
um, because you know that the you know it, it can go all the way into a sort of uh, self-realized states of consciousness, which are very high states of consciousness, um, which we don't know a great deal about most humans, but um, they are kind of states of compassion or deep forgiveness. They're where we can really access, you know, uh, you know, states of ecstasy or 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 universal unconditional love, things like that. Um, or incredible lucidity of mind, as I said before, or silent mind, you know, these higher states of consciousness that lie latent in our DNA. So the whole of Gene Keys is about activating, as you said, at higher frequency, what's already inside us. But it begins with the shadow. That's what's so extraordinary about it. It begins with the trauma. That's really fascinating because as you were speaking, I was getting uh, a bit of a, a visual in, I'm very visual by the way, if you haven't worked that out, Richard, but I was thinking that these codes are within or part of our DNA. And so basically if there's a lot of resistance, we're at that lower vibrational frequency where, where that, what the expression of that code will be the shadow, but the less resistance we have, the more that we allow the codes to express themselves through our vehicle is this how we then raise the vibrational frequency into exactly. the gift and then is it city the higher vi the highest vibration that you speak about is that is that correct yeah yeah that's exactly it you see it's like uh if we go to like buddhism like the 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 great teacher buddha you know he started he was very bold because he said his first truth that he uttered of the noble truths was all life is suffering. It was like, are you really going to begin with that? And it's true. Like that is where you have to begin because that is what is the case. Now, if you close your eyes in a room on your own for an hour, you will find that suffering inside you. It is so uncomfortable. It's deep inside us. And we have to find it and go towards it. And there are lots of ways we can do that. But Gene Keys operate. It, it gives you a path called contemplation. And contemplation doesn't mean that you have to sit with your eyes closed in a room. It's not the same as meditation. It might include meditation. Uh, but it's an inner, it's creating an inner space so you can see yourself more clearly. So it's a pattern where you're making space for yourself to see more of yourself and to see your behavior more clearly and to break patterns. And to do that, you have to be pausing. You have to stop. You have to create natural breaks in your daily rhythms so that you can see who you are and how you're behaving. That's, you know, that's a bit like mindfulness, but it's a little bit more creative and proactive than mindfulness um, contemplation because you can actually actively contemplate and engage and you can use your imagination and like you said, you can use visuals and you can use, you know, audios and you can use lots of tools if you want as part of your contemplative journey. So it's not like you have to just sit around doing nothing, although that might also be part of your process. I, we were sharing earlier, like I use like the tea ceremony, which I learned from, you know, a tea master as a way of keeping my hands and things busy when I'm in a contemplative state and I drink and it's delicious. And I love the process of like these little pots and cups. And it's like, it's like a child playing with tea, but it keeps the child busy and, and we're the child. And while the child is doing the thing, the mind is calming, the heart is softening, and then you enter the contemplative space. And once you're in it, you're in it. And so we, there's lots of ways that you can trick yourself in everyday life. doesn't matter how busy your life is. There's so many ways you can trick yourself into those, those contemplative states. And, and that's when you start to see and, and, and enact transformation in your life. So it's, it's very practical as well, this process. I love that. And I think also, you know, what you, you were speaking about before, uh, that we, I think that, that some of the hardest things that I've ever endured in my life, and we've all had, like you said, we've, we've got our own trauma, whether it's small or big trauma, but they've been the most profound times of my life because that's where I have grown the most, as painful as they were. Uh, and there was a time uh, many years ago now, it was 2012, 
um, I was this high flying executive on the pace, like fast pace all the time, being really, really busy without even acknowledging that I was running away from myself. I wasn't leaning into what I need to lean to into. And then what happened was I was, um, I was basically housebound for 12 months. I had a breakdown and I, I relate to that time of my life, the dark night of the soul, because I discovered aspects of myself that I didn't even knew that it was even there. But when I came out of that 12 months, uh, which is how I wrote my first book, was very transforming in, in the way that I can't still to this day put pen to paper and explain it. Uh, it just happened. It was one of those things that sometimes life chops us off the legs so that we have those pause moments. And so just from that experience, I quite often say, where am I? And quite, quite often I'm external focus. And so then I just go back in and, and I, I try to practice being in my center. And to do that is just to be in my heart. But Richard, it's very hard. It's one of those things because it's, it's an, you have to be consciously aware of it. And that in itself is a practice every day. Mm -hmm. you know? So what would you say for, to those? And many people out there are busy, keeping themselves busy, probably too afraid to lean into what they're going to find in their shadow aspects. Because I feel like we've all come here to do shadow work. Yeah. 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 So how do, you, how do you navigate through this kind of lifestyle that we all live? very fast paced. We're always on call 24 by seven. What's your trick? Well, one little practical thing, which I just offer your listeners is because it's fun and you can do it right now is um, I create a little simple, very simple, beautiful little app. It's called triple flame. It's on the app store. It's free. And you can download that little app. And it, what it does is every three hours on three, six, nine, 12 o'clock, it bings you on your phone and it gives you a th it, the, it gives you the opportunity or the invitation for a three minute pause. So three minutes every three hours. If you can't do that, yeah, you know, forget it. It's like because it's a small thing. But actually, it is quite a challenging thing to take those pauses because you might be in the you, you, you're often in the middle of something and then a pause comes and it's a challenge. Because to break to break some to break the cycle of being in the middle of something that you think is very important, which it you know it it sometimes is, and you can't stop. And you might be driving as well, so you might be in in the middle of an activity, and it doesn't mean you have to stop that activity. It means that you can do that activity, but with a much enhanced awareness, just the discipline of three minutes, or sometimes it is actually stop it so even pull over the car for three minutes or stop what you're doing for three minutes or tell the person you're with i'm just doing this pausing thing you can join me but i'm just going to three minutes close my eyes and listen to this short meditation or what and on there i created a lovely little um I mean, it's, there's lots of little meditation journeys and things i've done over my life but there's one um that my son did the piano music to it. He's at 18. He's like a real talented piano. It's very, very simple. It's just a few notes. And it's me just reminding you to soften your heart and open your mind and open your mind and soften your heart. And I literally just saying those things over and over again for three minutes in a sort with this beautiful music. And a lot of people love it, as do I, because it just reminds us of that essential thing of like, just for three minutes, soften your heart and open your mind and open your mind and soften your heart. And those two are so linked. And immediately you remind your body of the fact that it's here. Your breath starts to drop and deepen. And for three minutes only, and, and you, you know, as you get into it, you might expand it. You know, there's a five minute and a 10 minute version as well. So you can extend it if you want. And then the other fun thing about it, by the way, is the app also tells you how many other people are pausing right now in your time zone. So it's kind of fun. You're not alone. And my, I have a goal of like, I'd like to get 10,000 or 100,000 people pausing in different zones around the world. And um, so that we've kind of slowing things down a little bit. We're just taking these little breaks that allow us to access back in. So anyway, that's a little gift. Um, <laughs> and it's a fun thing, but it's very powerful and can change your life. Just that, just three minutes, three, six, nine, 12. You're probably gonna do 12 to 15 minutes a day. That's it. 
just being inwards. And as I said, if you can't and, and if you can't stop, then do the thing you're doing, but just do it with and breathing at the same time. But it's a lovely thing to do if you're in the middle of like, you know, doing something online and then you suddenly get your three minutes, then just stand up and move or go for a walk around the house or, got, you know, or do something that breaks the pattern for three minutes. And if you do it consistently, you begin to create a rhythm, an internal rhythm of looking within. And then it starts to become second nature and you start to do it without needing the app because you start to see that there are actually pauses appearing naturally all the time in our lives, but we just race through them. We don't harvest them. And then you become, you know, if you do this, you become a more contemplative person. And you so you become a lucid person and you become an open hearted person and you just become the person that you were born to be and you don't need anything else. You don't need any gene keys. You don't need any sort of clever techniques from, you know, you don't need 10 hour webinars or thousands of pounds doing a course in this or that, or even the gene keys. <laughs> like You just need something really simple if you're disciplined. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's one thing. I love that. It's, I it's, do that practice. Heart and mind and heart coherence, right? And it it's makes very you feel present. Very much. Rather than allowing whatever's driving the bus, I call it. Uh, because I, when you actually stop, when you pause, and you, or you for me, I'm, I'm only speaking from my own experience, but when I pause, I'm like, what is driving this business? A lot of the times it's either people pleasing, um, wanting to feel like I belong, because I'm always, you know, helping people, doing things for, for others or with others. And so, and then when you go even a little bit deeper, and that might go into the shadow, what drives even that behavior? And that's going even deeper again. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's I bring going... it into my business, bring it into my business, yes. you know, so that everyone in the business is pausing at the same time or, you know, we're kind of global. So people are actually pausing at different time zones, but it's like you can, you know, and, and now because the app's successful and people, lots of people are using it, when you turn it, when you open it up, there's always someone pausing somewhere in the world, which is lovely. It means there's now a permanent pause going on and i i love that and so when you bring it into a business it actually makes you know it's still challenging it is challenging because to stop requires a momentum you know because you're, you're doing something you're in a task and you're engaging and you've got things and lists and stuff and then suddenly you have to you're someone something asks you to stop and you're like i can't stop i don't know how to stop but once you do, it's like when you come back after three minutes or five, whatever, you're you're com you come back with a completely different attitude because you, your breath patterns changed, and then you might see that the, your priorities have shifted, and the thing that you were trying to do, you do it in a completely different way, or you just go, "What was I doing? I can leave that till later. That I need to actually do this. I need to." Or you might think. Why am I sending an email to this person? This is a very difficult email or text or something. Why don't I just talk to them? It's going to be a lot easier. And so you come back with these fresh kind of, because you're breathing. And, and so you, you're, you become more human. You, you, <laughs> you forget you're not a machine just doing a task. You, you're actually human. And then you realize there's another human on the other end of this. Maybe I should talk to them, you know. And things like that. So you 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 find an easier pathway in life because you're breathing. <laughs> Otherwise, what we do is we just get caught into these loops, like I said earlier, the, the victim loop, and we propagate it and our behavior. So in a business, for example, you propagate those loops. And if you're putting that energy out, it then triggers it in someone else. And then you've got two wound patterns engaging together reinforcing each other as opposed to coming at it from a more diplomatic view where you're you know you've done the open heart lucid mind and you're like ah oh, i see another way here <laughs> and and that other way will open up like a creative resolution that you hadn't seen previously so you can apply it to everything but it's it's most powerful at the human level of relations at relating so a lot of gene keys is teaching us 
about reminding us because we all know how to relate but we've just for, we've just forgotten we get we get sort of in these patterns and it's much easier than we think <laughs> so yes. yeah and, and it really links and i'm thinking about behavior breeds behavior so when you're talking about going on the app and you see that there's other people with you there's this level of belonging and this is a really big thing too because unconsciously we we want to belong we want to connect with others and so there's this like collective consciousness doing this together from all over the world joining the dots I can just see it's so beautiful I love that way that you described it yeah I would love to uh, get a bit of understanding of the I guess the numerology New, numerology so as I, I explained to you uh, before we came on the show the way that I use the book and by the way for everybody this is the beautiful book the gene key book it is a big thick book as you can see the way that sometimes I grab it is if I would like to uh, you know get insight about something or make a decision about something I'll just open it up and then just the first thing that comes to mind I'll read it the one thing that I've noticed, and I'm, I'm not too sure if numerology is attached to some of these gene keys, but it's almost like the numbers have their own energy and their own essence. And it's very reflective in some of the, 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 the beautiful words that I connect with. So is numerology also an aspect of gene keys? Well, I guess traditional numerology, as far as I understand it, is, is not part of gene keys, but, um, what it it is all to do with numbers and you know back in the 90s i had a, a sort of big mystical experience and um, that last that and it kind of got me launched on my path and it was a spontaneous experience but and it lasted three days and i was in it for three days i hadn't taken any chemicals or anything it just happened and in those three days one of the things that i saw was these codes and i just saw codes within codes all around me and i realized that you know when like what you know there's a, that that's saying your days are numbered <laughs> um and i sort of that was really true but i thought wow everything everything in this universe operates according to these codes everything it's like it's perfect it's beautiful it's the super symmetry involved in the whole of the universe is just remarkable but you know you, i was in that state where i saw that for many of us in our normal everyday state we've kind of forgotten that right if we were in that state we would be in absolute trust and so we would have no resistance to anything in our lives and we'd have no resistance in our bodies anymore you know we wouldn't have any we wouldn't be generating any more kind of karma as it as the ancients call it and so I, I was given the gift of being in that state for three days as a reference point for the rest of my life. And so I understood that these that these numbers were everywhere in the cosmos. And, and I've had great conversations with, you know, mathematicians since like really good, high quality mathematicians about this. And and the understanding that numbers, you know, are, are kind of a part of the code of life and that they because they they're infinite right so they're kind of they're a way of understanding infinity but they, because they just go off into into infinity numbers and so did shapes as well and sacred geometry that was another way of mapping the cosmos you know and i and so i understood those two things geometry symmetry and number are part of the kind of framework of our reality and now there's a lot in quantum physics saying that our you know the framework of our reality is actually um that time and space is is, is in question now you know so the time space continuum by which we measure everything from the speed of light to everything is actually questionable um because of because of the nature of consciousness itself and consciousness seems to be bound up in time and space and consciousness is also timeless and infinite. So and anyway, without going down philosophy, this was an experience for me. This was a living experience in my body. And it's never left me since I had that experience. And so when I came back to the Gene Keys and, and it was a num it, it used numbers and it used astrological positions, you know, and timings and placements and geometries and symmetries. And I started to explore the numbering 
and I started to see these symmetries. And especially when I started doing profiles for people in the early days, I, I did kind of, I read people's profiles for them. Nowadays, I create a program so that you can unpick your own profile. This is much more empowering to do it yourself. Um, but I read people's profiles and I would look at these numbers and I would see them coming in these incredible symmetries. And I would look at the symmetries of when someone was born and when their son and daughter was born. And I would see these positions and I'd be like, oh my God, these numbers are just, they keep coming back in symmetries and patterns and synchronicities. And I realized this was part of the nature of reality is that this deeply embedded fractal patterns that are underneath everything that connect everyone through time and space. And that when we leave this plane, when our consciousness leaves this plane at death, we enter back into the supersymmetry and we become part of the those other dimensions where our consciousness can once again see the truth of its immortality, its eternity. And that's a big thing for us in these mortal forms because the mortal form so strongly dictates our belief system because we think because this dies, we think I must die. <laughs> So anyway, I've gone off rather from your question, but I used it as a launch pad in something I'm interested in. And But the numbers are, they do come in sequences. And when you study gene keys, when you come and contemplate your own gene keys, you come to sequences. So we call them the Venus sequence, which is you know about relationships. And then we have the activation sequence. That's the first one most people look at. And that's about genius. That's like, these are the numbers that relate to your genius. So you have four of them, four gene keys that relate to your genius. And you can contemplate those. And then you have a sequence of, because genetics all works sequencing. And evolution works according to sequencing, you know, because we everything in, in nature unlocks and unzips and unravels according to steps and sequences in time. And... And that's so that's part of how our brain can understand things in sequences. That's what logic does, actually. But there's also the other side where things don't happen in sequences. They happen in quantum leaps. And that's the right side of the brain. That's the more artistic, the more poetic. And I also, because I'm more of a poet than a scientist, I kind of wove more. I wove a lot of that into my texts in how I write um, and how I use words to explain, describe, allude, use metaphors, um, so that the right brain also can understand that there are there's always the possibility of a quantum leap happening or a transformational event or an epiphany, I call it, or a breakthrough. And those are also part of our lives. But and this is the thing why I come back to the pausing. If you don't create the spaces for them, they can't happen. Right. So if you don't have a space for transformation or breakthrough, if you don't create a space, it can't happen. So pausing is the first layer because it is in those pauses that the that the transformations happen. But you can't make them happen. You just have to have as many pauses as possible. That's why people meditate. That's why the lamas and the teachers, they, they spend hours meditating, because when you're sitting in that state for long enough, sooner or later, one of these catalyzing experiences occurs, but it occurs without you having done anything. It occurs because you created the pause and then it occurs. It's an it's, it's a strange thing. It's, it's an a causal event, which means that you didn't cause it to happen. All you did is created a space. And when it was ready, it happened. <laughs> That's why the pauses are magic, because if you, if in if in a month you have, let's say, 600 pauses or, or let's say less let's say 100 pauses in a month possibly possibly in one of those pauses you will have an epiphany event you know something outside your reality happens maybe you start crying maybe you start laughing maybe your body starts shaking maybe you start sweating maybe maybe it's gentler maybe it's like your heart just suddenly melts or something happens, or it could even be an external something that happens in one of those pauses that causes this opening. But you needed to create space out of time. 
so that it could happen because it doesn't happen within time. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's sort of the gene keys is hard to explain because it's sequential and, and, and kind of mathematical, but it's also magical. I oh, know. I yeah. totally agree with you. And even, you I mean, the, the things that we do, um, we uh, have a coaching academy, a positive psychology coaching academy. And yeah. the, that's what all we do is give space to be yeah. seen, heard and valued. And the breakthroughs that you speak about is when they're allowing themselves to contemplate what they're, uh, what they're struggling with, um, uh, the resistance, whatever that may be. So you can see those breakthroughs happen. It's beautiful. Um, when you were talking about numbers, the one thing I kept seeing, and I think the links with the, the power numbers, the 11, the 22, the 33, 44, 55 was an interesting one, Gene Key 55. But even that, and I, I think that I'd love to unpack that because I have got that as in, I'd love to get a bit of an understanding of the power numbers. But why is Gene Key 55 so special? What's so powerful? Yeah, well, that about transformation. Yeah, it's funny that you should mention the number. I call them the master numbers, 11, 22, 33, um, because I'm doing a kind of course on them now. I'm, I'm sort of preparing a series on them and starting with 11. And 55 is is special because um, in the Jinkies book, um, as I and it took seven years to write that book because it was a book I contemplated you know, each one until it came to me. And then I wrote it and I didn't write it in a sequence either. I just wrote them randomly. And so events happened in my life that then as I was contemplating each of those 64 archetypes, events would occur that would teach me about that number, about that code. And then I'd write about the code from the, from something that had happened either in, inside or outside or both. And that was a, a really cool way of writing this book. Um, so it was very embodied for me. It was, a you know, by the time I'd done it, I'd, I'd literally sort of gone through all 64 of, of my codes. And so I'd sort of reprogrammed myself. And I think many people use the book like that. I think you do, yeah. So 55 came and it came it, it, like a whirlwind, um, different from any of the other keys. And it came, it was much longer and it contained a prophecy in it and which none of the others do <laughs> and and it was sort of it's it's completely out there when you read it it's like oh my god this is like describing the future human and it's describing this time called the great change which is now it's a transition time for humans as we move from one species we and literally a new species is coming from within our dna and so it predicts a new human emerging, which hasn't emerged yet, but it's, it projects it and, it and it puts everything else that's happening around us in the framework of that. And it was also something that um, I should say is partly inspired by the teacher of human design who also saw this in the codes and in the number 55. So I was inspired by that, but, it, but I went much further um, in a way. And in a, in a, 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 because when, when that, 55 chapter was written it kind of described this future human as a collective intelligence as a networking intelligence that was coming online in in us um and that may have been there in some rudimentary form in our distant ancestral past so in other words when we were hunter gatherers and we had to work as as <clears throat> as units in order to survive you know if we were hunting a mammoth or running from a wolf or something we had to operate as a as a symbiotic synthesis unit you know and animals and creatures in nature do that you see it in in uh, in the insect realm you see it in the bird realm you see it anchovies doing it you see wild dogs hunting in it as one unit you know psychically connected clearly in some way and and so you see all of this in nature but humans um you know we've we've lost it but so the 55 predicts that the future human which will arise from inside the current human as a forking of our species which has happened in the past a natural forking um that this new human will come online that um is a collective connected human um and it's based on an awareness system in our gut you know in our in our microbiome 
um, which is the, where most DNA is, like 98, 90% of our DNA is in the gut. And so it's connected. It's the connective tissue of an awareness system that is coming online through our gut, through through that sort of plexus area, the center, which is which is very has a contains a very advanced awareness system, actually, arguably more advanced than the brain, <laughs> um, because it it is a, it doesn't require logic in order to make a decision. It knows that's why the gut is the gut. It knows which decision ensures our health and our vitality and our flourishing without needing to know in advance to work it out. And so that connected fully to our brain, those two operating together, you know, like the heart and the, you know, open heart, open mind, soft heart, open mind, soft belly, open mind. That That is our future consciousness. Um, and it's a very different species. It's a very di it has a very different feeling. So when the fifty fifth describes the future human, it describes in a kind of poetic, romantic way um, something that seems like a dream, in a way. So when you read that, you're like, really? <laughs> Can that really be true? Like we really because the connective tissue is love, but it's it's not so much emotional love that might have that component. It's beyond that. It's more of the it's universal love. It's unconditional love. It's love as the as the connective tissue of all things. It's a it's a benevolent force that lies at the core of creation, and you know you might call it God or your divine or whatever, or it's the Holy Spirit, or you can. There's so many names for it: Chi, Prana, the Force. You know, it's it is that that kind of as that moves through us in an unimpeded way you know, then without the resistance of our egos and our fears and the old brain, then we enter into this newer consciousness. And that consciousness then requires a new kind of body. And that's what the 55 predicts. It predicts new bodies coming in with superior awareness systems um, that allow us much more readily to create this networked intelligence and then in a way we get to save ourselves and save the planet and that's you know so it's a, it's a very happy story the 55 when you read it it's like seems kind of like a dream but it's also it makes a lot of sense and it and it describes the nest the need for a breakdown in order for a breakthrough to happen and and that often happens in systems where before systems engineer a breakthrough the the old system has to collapse and fall apart and so you can frame the whole of our current stage of society through that understanding. And then everyone always says, well, when's it going to happen? <laughs> and I don't know that, but it's like, because a, a change like this takes place over hundreds of years. You know, it's a very, very quick change. Actually, that's clear from the 55. But in evolutionary, because a change like this in evolutionary terms, if it were natural and gradual, would take millions of years but ch the the biggest changes in nature and biology always happen quickly always it's historically it's it's a it's called the red queen hypothesis like things happen fast you know because tra and because trauma comes and when trauma comes in a system it quickly like we started this conversation you know it quickly gives birth to something new and that's the whole planet going through that so it gives a the 55 gives a really upbeat spin on everything that's going on in our planet that we are pretty scared of <laughs> and for good reason yeah i was just thinking it's really hard to fathom because of all the suffering all the pain that's around us all the fear uh, from from you know i mean i don't watch tv i don't watch the news i don't listen to radio because i'm too sensitive uh, but it's 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 great to hear the same in the same token. When you were speaking about it, I got, I got the picture of the um, the caterpillar in, turning into a butterfly, that whole transformation piece. Uh, so, are we going to be growing wings? What are we? Are we going to be completely? You know, it, it's it's it, it's it's um it sounds magical. It sounds like we're going to have superpowers. Well, yeah, we are in a way. I mean, the 
the image that Gene Keys uses is the dragonfly, and and you see dragonflies on my books, you know, on the front covers of my books and things. And um, it, the dragonfly, it's a bit like the caterpillar myth leg or allegory, but, but slightly different because it it's it spends three like three years of its life approximately underwater as a predator called a nymph, and and then it one day rather suddenly moves out of the water and comes up into the light it's it's like it's never left the water before because it's an underwater creature and then it comes into the air and then the sun starts to work on it and then this this dragon inside with multicolored iridescent wings emerges it's, and it's the most it's a remarkable extraordinary allegory it's extraordinary that it happens that this can this creature who lives in this under under underworld can become this angelic. It's not that it's angelic, but it's but it becomes a dragon. It's the difference is so astounding. It is like butterfly and, and caterpillar. But um, what I love about the dragonfly metaphor, and I think it's why it came so strongly in the Gene Key 55, and I tell the story more fully in there, um, is that the water element gives rise to the air element and the, the water element is our emotional nature, our desire nature, you know? And so it's that that is the raw material for the new awareness. Um, so it's, it's, it's transformational. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful transformational image. I guess it goes hand in hand with like the Aquarian age and things like that. You know, that water element that gets transformed into the air. And, and also I think, what I like about the allegory is that the when you look at the nymph or you look at the caterpillar and you and you really look at them in their environment and you don't understand what it is, what it will become seems to have no relationship to what it was. You look at it and you go, how can that be in there? And that's the same with us. You look at us and go, how can that be in there? So when we get there, we'll look back and go, how is this in that? How did this come from that? It's a miracle. It's going to seem like a miracle. So yeah, we have higher states of consciousness dormant in our DNA. This is what I spend a lot of time talking about. And I describe them in the book, you know, these heightened states that exist within us. They're not kind of weird, you know, magical miracle states. They, they seem like that to us. They're actually our natural state. Um, and yes, we do have the capacity to break some of the current perceived laws of physics but there are only perceived laws of physics you know that they're just that's what the material brain that's as far as it can see through the logical circuitry beyond that lie dragons <laughs> that's amazing so collectively we're in the shadow right now we haven't found our gift i think you know some of us are beginning to find the gift and um many of us are still in the shadow it depends on what we tune our sets to you know if you tune your set to the shadow that's all you're going to see yeah. and if you tune your set to the gift you start to actually do something you know because creativity starts to emerge so you, so you you're no longer in that victim pattern and the 55 key it's all about transforming the victim into freedom so it's about being freeing ourselves from our own mindset, you know, because there are so many mindsets around the world that, that, that right now that people believe that they are the victim, whether they believe they're the victim of a government or the people in black or whatever it is they believe that, but, you know, and there's truth to it, but not the fact that they're a victim. You know, there's truth to the manipulation, but that doesn't mean that you have to kind of be the victim of the, you know, the manipulation and it doesn't mean that you have to you know because you're also the victim of the ma manipulation if you fight back in anger you know you're still the victim only if you find the creative solution at a higher frequency do you escape the victim cycle because the victim cycle requires a reactionary <laughs> you know it actually needs someone to fight with so the moment you let go of your side, it's got nothing to fight with. And that's that's a great, you know, clue for all relationships. Like if someone if someone wants to fight with you, if you can let go of your side of the argument, 
you've won <laughs> because because they that that pattern in that other person suddenly has nowhere to go it has nothing to latch on to so it's got because it needs the other side to latch on to so the victim requires you know a victim and a, a tyrant it requires both sides the victim and the tyrant or the violator and the victim it requires two sides so again we're learning through the gene keys to empower ourselves to free ourselves from these cycles and patterns and they're subtle inside us especially in the mind the mind gets is in all kinds of victim patterns at layers and layers and layers and again that's why we need this self-awareness of these pauses and the deep contemplation so we can begin to root out the subtler and subtler ones because we're very vain you know and, and the more spiritual we become in a way the more refined our vanity becomes so we, we kind of really have to like be very aware of the things that are driving us I'm having a bit of a chuckle to myself because I see that definitely in relationships, that's probably one of my biggest patterns that I've seen. If I go back into my timeline, it's been uh -huh. the the pattern is relationship. But And so I've been practicing non-resistance, non-judgment and uh, non-attachment. And in a way, by letting go of that, there is no more bickering or there's this, it, there is one side, but when you don't react to it, but respond to it, the energy is very different. So I love the fact that you brought that up. I yeah. am very conscious of your time and I'm looking at the time right now. So I am conscious of your time. I think Richard, we're going to have to get you back on the show because there's a whole lot of questions I've got here that I haven't even asked yet. Um, but I, um, is there anything specifically that you would like to say about the gene key before we go into our three shiny gold nuggets? Was there anything else that you would like to add? Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, I'll try and summarize it in the nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So the way that we wrap up the show is we love to ask our guests to share three shiny golden nuggets for our audience. What would be those three shiny golden nuggets for you, Richard? Well, if I put them in the, I, I can, I can put them in the frame of like, here are three nuggets and here are three ways to kind of access those nuggets as well. So the first one I already said, which is pausing, you know, if you can begin, begin that practice of pausing and creating a space so that transformation occur can occur spontaneously in your life, you will see a miracle appearing before your eyes. Um, and so that that was why I mentioned the triple flame as an app. That's a really cool way for you to begin that journey. Another one is like um, purpose. Everyone's always talking about their purpose. What's my purpose? Everyone's saying, I can help you find your purpose. You know, it's a multi-billion pound dollar industry. I'm kind of in it as well in some way, but I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a um a maverick because I say that the purpose of our life is to be. So you don't need anything more than to find the being. And it's not what you're doing. What you're doing can change and can, you know, but what but the being doesn't change. So it's the true purpose, the higher purpose of all of us is to kind of access and that is out of that being so it's connected to the contemplation and the pausing out of that being emerges our purpose our higher purpose and out of that being emerges our doing whatever our doing is you know whatever whatever our job is or whatever our, you know whatever the external side of that is but the real thing is the is the being and um and so I, I, the practical side of that is if you want to access that through gene keys which is a really nice way to come into it because you'll be looking at your being and like how do i there's a word actually specifically or series of words for your being and for your purpose and you know so there's a shadow like mine is impatience for example or restlessness that's the thing that gets in the way of me just being my being <laughs> so it's really key those words are really key so there's a there's a little program called new to the gene keys it's a free program and it's, it's a three day little process you can do and it introduces you to the gene keys but also gives you a kind of journey into the nature of that being for you by showing you your key so that's a kind of fun thing and then the third one um what's my third one i think it's all it's about always it's again connected to the other two but it's about always being open to the miraculous so like our minds are so like dictated by the scientific view of reality that we 
kind of have forgotten a lot of us about the you know the magical view of na of nature that there are things that we can't work out and will never work out and part of the mystery is that it has to stay a mystery and that there, there you know there's going to always be aspects of life that we are not we can't understand with the mind because the mind is logical and logic only goes as far as paradox because then beyond that is infinity and we're infinite and we're infinite beings so i would say the third one is like be open to the miraculous happening and it, it's connected to the pauses it's connected to the purpose they're really one nugget um and another so another way you could go through my journey is another little free program called seven days of grace which is hugely popular if you're interested in gene keys do new to the gene keys if you're interested in like a magical experience you could do them both but the, this one's seven days you do seven days and there's a little program and you listen to a little thing and you watch this thing but in those seven days we create a space for grace and um so we're actually deliberately creating a kind of a field so that something extraordinary can happen in that field and it might not happen in that in those seven days it might happen after those seven days um but it also might happen in those seven days and for some people it does you know and but what we do is we create the space so it's and the set so all my all the three things i've given you triple flame the seven days of grace and new to the gene keys they all they're all free they all give you an experience potentially of something magical so the my third one is like be open to something unexpected and magical and benevolent occurring to you <laughs> in the coming times especially if you get, if you engage with these materials so we can we can you you have those links oh absolutely um, we'll have them in the show notes and um i i know that before we got on the show we were talking about all the stuff the wonderful new stuff that you're getting into uh and you're researching and maybe we can get you back on the show because we do have a lot of corporates business owners entrepreneurs and so there's a real business side to the gene keys as well which there i'd is. love to really <laughs> unpack if you wanted to give yeah. your high level to our audience just to give them a little bit of ex um, a little bit of an appetizer sure we do have a lot of tools that are being developed specifically for use in businesses and organizations the gene keys themselves are really powerful but there's also a new matrix coming on um, called the star pearl that will be released later this year and we are developing that and i am um putting it in first of all testing it in my own business with my own team and um so it's currently in process um and is being measured and kind of tested to see um to, so that we get it working fully and it's it's a coherence creating team uh, team tool um because it can create that's that's its potential to create a really harmonious environment in any group of people um and you know so th that's quite that's a big ask right so there's a lot of elements to it but it's also rooted partly in the gene keys transmission it's a matrix for looking at groups and looking at whole societies actually so that's um under development so kind of watch out stay in touch with gene keys and you'll see that tool be launched uh in its in its kind of um what should i say in its sort of mass mass global kind of version first so the individual version, so you can use it on your individual life. And the corporate version will come probably next year because it has to go through a developmental cycle. But it's really exciting. So if you stay in touch with Gene Keys, um, uh, you'll hear about those things. And then we can start running, um, you know, leadership, team building, you know, the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, that's really exciting. That's coming. Very exciting. Very exciting. Can't wait. So Richard, I want to say thank you so very much for coming on the show, sharing your wealth of wisdom for your time, your energy. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to reach out and I can't wait till here and uh, get you back on the show to really unpack your research. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's a real pleasure. Thank you for all you're doing in the world as well. Thank you. Thank you.